Um, someone who's been here at uh, Merton Abbey Fest before and uh, I've worked with Percy for many, many years. I'd like to give a big hand to, here she is, Sue Johns. version of the Old Testament. Um, so where of course do we start? We have to start with Adam and Eve. Now I'm going to take the part of Eve and I've got this lovely apple and I just need a volunteer Adam to step out of the audience and take a great big bite out of it. In your own time, uh, it's only the future of mankind hanging on this. Can we have an Adam? <laughs> Anywhere? <laughs> what would you have done if Adam had said that? Come on, let's have you. Let's have you. Thank you. <laughs> to tempt you, did it? What's that you say? You want your rib back? Come and get it. <laughs> Come back to the garden. What do you mean, banished? I've been thrown at a scarier places than that. We'll go at night. And once inside, bite my neck. Bite my thighs. Eat me alive. I'm going to do things to you that will terrify any serpent for miles. And here in this Eden, amongst the fallen fig leaves, every time you devour me, you can have another apple and will build a chapel from discarded cause defying the laws of God. <laughs> I don't think he's going to be doing that again in a hurry. <laughs> Remembering Mrs. Lot. Genesis chapter 19 verse 26. But his wife looked from behind him and she became a pillar of salt. Genesis chapter 19 verse 32. Come, let us make our father drink wine and we will lie with him that we may preserve the seed of our father. You are always looking over your shoulder, checking my movements. Had I trekked back over the plains? On our sinful streets you turned to the sounds of sodomy and sucking. As we silently closed our doors, conceived our daughters shrouded in the dark. They grew with a passion alien to their begetting strode before us from our city in flames. It was then that I whispered, Do you not wish to see how all that irks you burns? You could not resist. And I laughed at your pale pillar. The art of our maker without mercy, I laughed as our offspring plied me with wine. I have been drinking their beauty for years, and I took them, our angels, held by the hair they could not turn, just writhe and work themselves a lineage as I lit their bodies free of salt. <laughs> Um, 
Towards the end of last year, uh, the mother of one of my closest friends um, passed away. And afterwards, I helped her um, clear out all her mother's clothes. And I was quite surprised that actually I came away <laughs> with a few items myself. Wearing your mother's clothes. Cool and serviceable, the navy shirt. Had recovered creaseless from the hugs and handshakes in praise of the captain at the golf club lunch. A shop girl now beneath my workaday suit. Once all at sea, the plum negligee cruised over stockinged legs, rescued the falling face powder in preparation for the upper deck. I have made a boozy broad of her as she navigates a bar stool for gin and cigarettes. We bin bagged and labelled these girls for charity. High street and designer claiming their side of the bed. Your father retaining the ball gowns as is his other half recalling each dance from her casket beneath the valance. The soft pastel leisure wear is its mother's daughter, petite, fit for purpose, the only child, a younger mirror image in the good coats, to be your sisters at christenings, graduations and weddings where even the bride will compliment the cut. A yellow spotted blouse had spring stepped sensible shoes reflected like a buttercup under the chin of masonic wives as they accepted sandwiches now my skinny jeans are sunlit as she makes her mark at the art show and that kingfisher jacket on which many a floral dress took flight though we can't Put a name to the celebrations. I am taking her out in a blaze of matching hair and nails. This is um, this is called before the Pussy Riots. Um, I don't think it needs too much explanation, but it has got some quotes in it. Um, one from Alfred Lord Tennyson's poem, The Charge of the Light Brigade, one from the Quran, and one from the Hindu Manuscriti. Before the Pussy Riots, one. The brightly balaclavered, ventured where intrigue capered amongst the bells and incense, unorthodox then to dance and punkily pray to virgin saints. When will their glory fade? Oh, what a charge they made, those girls. Sentenced to sow the warp of unease, only discarding the weft of corruption to queue for gulag fare in lines as crisp as Stalinist snow. Two. To be violated was as criminal as it was to love. For the believing women, who drew their outer clothes around them, that they would be recognised and not molested. Freedom was claimed in dreams, behind bars, beneath burkas, as their learned sisters took to the skies with the speed of flying acid, their pages bullet-ridden. Their faces a curse upon the naming of schools. Three. It was written that the nature of women was to seduce men, but the sound was red when a naked girl hit the dust. As her honour soaked the ground in a continent of coloured silk, there was none to cover her. The preserver and the conqueror of ignorance were as any other idols, bedecked with flowers, being offered a light lunch while Eve was teased. Justice was measured in media coverage, 
as a dowry purse was counted and a husband reached for kerosene and matches. We'd better do something a bit lighter after that. Um, celebrity culture, it's everywhere, except when it comes to poets. It seems to pass us by somehow. We don't get asked for our autographs, we don't get followed around by paparazzi. So I've been trying to find a way to get around that, and this is my latest idea. Um, I started going up to Sainsbury's up the road there on a Saturday afternoon, and I refuse to leave until someone recognises me. <laughs> <laughs> when will the public acknowledge I'm famous? Their denial of my literary prowess has me hanging around in supermarkets waiting to be recognised. Drawn to fresh vegetables, potato stanzas, the poetic symmetry of cauliflower. But my muse is unsettled by the area, the constant mopping, its proximity to the ringing tills. Unearthed, I opt for frozen. Here, young men, tossed by ironic fringes, ask why I am inspired by ice cream. Peas, I reply, occasionally sweet corn, and you'll never make a poet with that lack of observation, as the manager pleads, move, please, you're obstructing the access to the petty poire. Currently uprooted in continental cheeses, I observe the salads, rocket leaves in bags, Half rhymes of their former selves, beetroot minus its beak. Here, a renowned poet, noted I was a local celebrity, easing me aside, heaving Roquefort, Camembert, and Cure de Neufchatel into a basket bereft of greens. It was a metaphor for weighty verse. Hardened arteries en route to a prize, mm. dismissing my suggestion of carrot batons he made for the warmth of the bread counter. Mm. <laughs> this poem um, marks one of the highlights of um, my year so far <coughs> Death of Thatcher. Um, unfortunately, tinged with a bit of disappointment, so I don't think I'm going to get to fulfil a uh, very long-held ambition to go and dance on her grave. Um, I believe she was cremated and squirrelled off somewhere where we can't get to her. Um, and this is Iron Age Burial. The crows bring coal, community shadow. Draw a shield around the masses, their black-winged picket line. Magpies scour ancient sites of work for weeds and window glass to deck the dirt of prejudice and pound. As maggots make bold in the bouffant, dark eyes you turn with worms and slugs trudge over neck and rough. They come, coughing up the phlegm of street sleeping. Pissing out the system's poison since they imbibed a final living draught. Not soft shoed in silence, but laughing brave and booted big in place of mud, their pledge, in place, oh, sorry, their pledge a mud memorial for the soiling of the land. Okay, I'll do a couple more. Um, for those who don't know me, it says on the poster anyway, I'm from Cornwall, and uh, yeah, I don't normally read this. I think I will read this because it gives me a chance to show off this lovely anthology of Cornish poetry. Patrick's in it as well, and that will be on sale with uh, other books in the interval. This is written partly in Cornish, and it's about the sea, but it's also about the um, type of person we've rather a lot of in Cornwall, the second homeowner. An more or V, more kerno or V, Leas den regameris, dagameris, ala V, 
Haglibia the labric, Plagus and Barn, Hagalcio, Hachio, we destrew us and splan. I am the sea, the Cornish sea. I have taken many men, I can take thee. I can wet your rolled up trousers. I can bring down cliffs and houses. Plu, O Lev, Adi, Worth, Bon, E, Aleph, Poscaresic, O Halef, Bos, Gas. War, the Davis, I'm a Hullen, Lauer, the Skevens, a Kalenwell, Lou, a Thauer. You come down from the home counties by a big house built on a conservatory. Lucky you're not a local family, one room in a and b Take yourself to the estate agency. You've the money for all the best property and you want to be right next to me. How silly. And more or V, more Kerno or V, Leas Den, Regameris, Regameris, Ala V, Aglibia, the Labric, Plagus and Barn, Hagalcio, Hachio, we destroy us and splan. Sun and sea can make you smile though. Come and have a bob along on your lilo. Bring your picnic, park your car. Come out just a bit too far. Clue, oh, lev, thaddy, worth, on dress. E, aleph, poker, essic, bo, halleth, boss, gas. War, the davis, I'm a hullen, lower, the skevins, a colenwell, loom. Hour. Hear my voice from off the beach. I can be a sweetheart, or I can be a bitch. Salty kisses on your tongue, water filling up your lungs. And more or V, more Kerno or V, Leas den regameris, lagameris a la V, Haglibia the labric. Plagus and Barn, Hagalcio, Hachio, we destroy us and splan. Why not park your Newland Rover just a little closer to the pier, my dear? Clue, O Lev, Faddy, Worth, on Treff, E, Aleph, Poker, Restit, Po, Halef, Boss, Gas, War, the Davis, I'm a Hullen, Lauer. The Skevins are Colenwell, Loon and Thou are. I'm the sea, the Cornish Sea. I've taken many men. I've taken many men. I've taken many men. Oh, one little one to finish with. This is from my latest collection, Hush, which will also be on sale in the interview. And this is called express sets. Thinking of you once while on a train I came without the aid of touch or stroke just thought I wouldn't dare to tell you what had never dreamt it possible then wondered if that man behind his daily mail had spied a tremor slight rolling of the eyes the toilet reached by high-speed lurch, keen to inspect my trousered crotch and check the telltale signs of wet. Then back, uh, my, uh, along the aisle, composed, retake my seat and sip my coffee, smiling, still slightly out of breath. Thank you very much. Well, that was um, Sue Johns. Did I mention she's Cornish? Well, you might have picked that up anyway. <laughs>